So I'm joined here by Jim Dvorak, Paul Rogers and Paul Danmal at the Kitty Tippett Celebration event. We're here at St George's in Bristol and I just want to ask these gentlemen who knew Keith for such a long time, both as friends and as a colleague, um, what their memories are of him and what this day means to them. Jim. Having arrived in England uh, beginning of October 1970, uh, somehow I made my way to a couple of the improv places, found out where at the London School of Economics on a Friday night I can go and hear some uh, other music. And it was through listening to other music, and I don't know what it was called at the time. I remember the, the one in, in Harlem Park was the Albion Music Club, but this one I'm, I wasn't sure, but it was at the London School of Economics. Here it was this very long-haired, blonde guy with uh, a mink coat on, playing with Nick Evans, Mark Cherrick, John Marshall, of all people, um, uh, Mark Cherrick, and uh, yeah, Elton Dean. Uh, so I think they all started at the summer school in Barry together, so I was told afterwards. But that was the most far out music I had ever heard. Started to write home about it. Brilliant. Uh, because it was only my first month in England. And I said, this is, this is, this is the music I always wanted, wanted to hear. However, the next week I went and the music wasn't <laughs> together. <laughs> and it was just like, uh, n nothing seemed to connect. So I wrote home again. It wasn't very good this week. Right. You know, um, the next week, fine again, you know. But the, by this time, the Hundred Club was was a place to go to. So okay. my early days had more to do with going and listening. To okay. Them. This is where I first met Keith. Okay. Yeah. And when did you start playing with him? Who invited who to perform? Um, okay, Hundred Club, January, February. It was a group called Symbiosis. Was that Gary Window's band or was it Keith's? In any case, um, <laughs> edit this one out. Um, yeah, uh, that was when I was um, by this time starting to sit in. Right. And they said, oh, he's all right. Let him, let him sit in. You can I, join the gang. Well, I, I, I had to uh, <clears throat> ingratiated myself with uh, Brotherhood of Breath about a month earlier. And they said, um, God, it's okay, you know, it's, it's all right. So I started to hang out with, with them. It's, it's so it's an organic bit. evolution. I started to meet more people, felt yeah. more, more confident and stuff yeah. like that, and them and me. So yeah. it, was, it, was, it worked two ways, but it yeah. was a baptism of fire. But Keith was at pretty much the center of this yeah. activity. You know? yeah. And then you carried on to have a very long, you know, career I, of collaboration I, I, with I, him. I do regret not having a... a, a, a a part of um, Centipede because that summer I had gone to a rehearsal at Ronnie Scott's and there was Keith conducting his whole big, his whole big and a couple of my friends by this time. I think even Keith Bailey was in on, oh, on, on this, you know? And um, uh, a whole bunch, everyone was a star as far as I was concerned. Was, oh my God, look at this. So I sat at Ronnie's just listening to this and that was another, you know, how do you say, open to see yeah. the life and the music of, of a guy like Keith Tippett. Fantastic. Know? And then, Paul, I think, out of the three of you, you were the next person to... Well, um, I, I don't exactly remember when I met him, but I moved to London in 74, and I started going to see gigs like this with Keith Lewis and Elton and Harry Miller. And then um, when Harry Miller moved to Holland, there was gigs for me and one of the gigs was with Keith Septet, 1978 with Lewis, Elton, Mark Cherig and Keith. Uh, maybe, no it wouldn't have been Jeff Green, not with the piano, but it was that. Anyway. And it was Golden Square, there was um, in Cavendish, or no, um, some place in the Golden Square there was a, a club there, 1978. And Keith was really sweet. He said to me, he says, don't worry Paul. Don't worry, everything's going to be alright. Was that right. the Phoenix? That wasn't the Phoenix, no. no it was, it'll was. come to me. It was, no. okay. And uh, he was really sweet. For the first and last time, anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I started playing more 
regularly with him in the 80s. Yeah. And then we got Magician together, and that was yep. like 25 years. So. Absolutely. And I in mean, the beginning of Magician, we were working a lot. No, well, not all the time, but like mm, lots yeah. of stuff. Then it slowly got longer between each thing. Yeah. You know, it's like musicians never retire and the phone stopped ringing. That's what was happening there. It's just, it just stopped happening. Yeah. Not for, from us, but... Oh, you didn't go quit. No, it was just your fault. <laughs> I forgot. Oi. Oh, 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 nice, bro. Oi. Watch edit, it. edit, edit. <laughs> and that's the thing, I mean... Now, Life happened. <laughs> now, it's all so professional anyway. Yeah, Everything's the out. industry changed, I think. Yeah. I yeah. Telephones and computers and fucking hell. <laughs> so we have here another quarter of Magician. Yes, the two The survivors. Magician Collective. Yes. Um, and I remember when we were touring once, I asked you all what Magician was for each one of you. And you all said something different. You know, you all described the music differently. Ah. But on stage, it all came together so perfectly. Absolutely. On stage, that band was amazing. Right? And, and to me, when I listen back now, it gets better and better. Can't yeah. believe it. How that, uh, I mean, astonishing music. Stands um, the test of time, doesn't it? Well, it's getting, I don't know whether it's me, but it sounds like it gets better and better. I'm thinking, wow, yeah. were we doing that back then? Yeah. That's amazing. It still didn't get any money. We knew it was fantastic at the time. <laughs> what did you say? No, no. He owes me. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> um, you know, I uh, I forgot what I was saying now. Just because he owes <laughs> me just money. Just talking about money. musician. Was we? Oh, right. And what it meant, you know, Sorry. what it meant to you. It's <laughs> yeah. dementia. It's coming. It's dementia. It's <laughs> <mistake. laughs> Anyway, yes, it was a brilliant band. And, uh, but when did you first play with Keith? Um, actually, I went to a summer school. In fact, it was Keith came up to me and said, you know, here's my number, let's do something together. Brilliant. So I knew of him, of course, but I didn't. I'd never met him and, uh, and uh, I don't think I'd ever seen him. And this guy came up, I knew he was, you know. He's yeah. Keith, uh, and he heard me play and he gave me my number, phoned me, let's do something. And uh, that was quite a, a, a fantastic weekend for me. I met Keith, Barry Guy, did the same thing, said, here's my number. I thought, what's going on? Where was it? Uh, uh, it, was, it wasn't... Dartington? No, 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 way before then. It was about 1980. Okay. Was and, it in uh, London? No, no. It, it wasn't Barry either. Mm. I forgot what it was, but... Um, well, you obviously made an impression. Yeah. And well, um, for suppose. the right reasons. But, uh, yeah, which was amazing, actually. I, I had no idea, you know. Um, so, just very quickly before we finish, um, can you summarise Keith in one word, what he meant to you? <laughs> <laughs> dangerous, <laughs> dangerous question. In a sentence, just, you know, just your... I think he was an incredibly passionate man about music. I really do. That's what I remember about him. Yeah. His whole being was into the music. Yeah. And, and then he saw that in other players. And when he saw that in other players, he wanted to play with it. Yeah. So, uh, he's passionate about music. Paul? Uh, ditto. Ditto. Magician. Jim? Magician. The musical magician. You said one word. Yeah. <laughs> you kept the rules, Jim. Me too. <laughs> so we'll be um, reconvening with these Sorry. lovely gentlemen later for Dreamtime little... and the Keith Tippett Celebration Orchestra. Carry on, Jim. Just one little uh, afterthought. There was a um, Keith Bailey, the drummer, used to bring me down to Ronnie's because he and Roy Babington were doing the kickoff set. Right. For the, for the, when they uh, used to have three or four right. sets a night, right. yep. they'd have one at the beginning. I remember Keith. And Keith would do it with Roy and, and Keith Bailey. And that's how I got in for free. Right, okay. He said, you can't come with me. So I'd stay the whole night. And they got to know me down there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Legendary. A, a real, a real bunter. But actually, to listen to Keith play, that was that was another. Yeah. So he played different in that context. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I could talk to you all all day, and I probably will. So I'll well, speak to you both. Speak to you all later. Yeah. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you.